Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, I have a friend on the show today, someone uh, I met almost a year ago, uh, who was very much like me, sort of a one-man show, but he's gone next level. He has a team now, so we're going to break all of this down. Please welcome Dewey Nguyen to the show. How you doing this morning, Dewey? Good, Michael. How you doing, bud? I'm doing very well. Why don't you just real quick introduce who you are, where you are in the country, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, so my name is Dewey Nguyen. I am from Polk County or Winter Haven, Florida. Um, so if you don't know where that is, we're dead center of uh, Florida, right between Orlando and Tampa. Um, started in real estate in 2012. Worked probably about five, six jobs, you know, in, in that time span there and finally went full time uh, last January. Um, and just trying to scale ever since. Very cool. So uh, just so everybody knows, you are a flipper, at least predominantly have been a flipper. Is that correct, Dewey? Uh, up until probably about... Three, four months ago, um, primarily fi uh, fix and flip. I did a few wholesale deals here and there and a couple of buy and holds. Um, but right now we're kind of transitioning. Uh, so we're kind of, um, what I was trying to create was more consistency. Yep. And I wasn't really doing that with fix and flips. And we were doing one or two deals a month. Um, so right now we're about three to five deals a month uh, with the wholesaling um, aspect to it. So, so we're kind of growing and scaling in that aspect. Yeah, this is going to be so much fun to break down because, you know, you, 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 you started this while working a full-time job, right? So did it as a side hustle? Multiple full-time jobs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Multiple full-time jobs. Yeah. Then you went full-time. Now you have a team. So let's, let's go back to the beginning. So, you know, do you, what, what brought you to real estate investing? Why did you do that first deal? Why did you jump in? Uh, let's start there. Well, growing up, um, you know, we were, we were real, real poor. Um, so, I mean, I, I worked since I was five years old. Uh, so, but I was able to watch my parents kind of grow, you know, from picking oranges to owning the orange grove to venturing into, you know, restaurants. And then my dad started getting into commercial uh, land uh, and, like, plazas and stuff like that, like the commercial space. Um, so, I thought he was this big guru and, and knew all this stuff about real estate. And, you know, I'd always ask him, Dad, you want to teach you real estate? I mean, that's what I want to do. You know, it seems like it's a lot of fun. And he, he would never teach me. You know, he was just <laughs> like, you know, one day, one day. And then come to find out, he didn't know anything about real estate. You know, he's amazing about what I know, you know. Um, but it was just kind of that, you know, I kind of like the whole aspect. I like buying old things, making them look new. You know, I've always bought cars, bikes, you know, anything that I've ever bought, I've always bought old and then I would just basically redo everything in it. Right. So that was, that was kind of fun for me. Um, and that's kind of why I like real estate is just turning something ugly into something pretty. So did you, so that's, that is interesting, right? Seeing your journey, working at five, seeing your family going from picking oranges to owning it, to, to doing all those things. Um, what, what, when you were, can you remember being younger and, and sort of knowing when your mom and dad kind of made it? Did you ever have that kind of inclination or did they just keep working forever and you just, you just never really knew? You know, I mean, you kind of got like a little glimpse of it, you know, but we were so frugal. Like, <laughs> you know, we wouldn't buy anything. My mom would never spend money. So it's like, you couldn't really tell, you know, that they were doing really well, but like when over you know, as I got older and I started kind of looking at the grand scheme of things, I was like, dude, he has a lot of stuff, you know, he's like, <laughs> and assets. I was like, where'd all this come from? You know, so I hit me up one time, but, but yeah, you know, it's just, you know, you got a glimpse of it, but I just never really wrapped my head around it. I really never even saw them really. I mean, growing up, they just worked so much. It's yeah. just raised each other. I'm guessing, I don't want to assume, so I'll ask. I'm guessing your, your parents were immigrants. They immigrated to, yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, I, I know Gary V talks about this a lot, right? Um, about the immigrant mentality and it's work all the time and save your, and save, right? Be frugal to use your word. And there is so much gold just in understanding that, 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 you know, the average American doesn't appreciate, right? The social media and all of that and the flash and all the new stuff, right? Um, yeah. So you were a... Uh, you were trained from a very early age to, uh, to, to dominate whatever market you choose. So you should thank your parents. No, I do. Every, yeah. it's, it's been amazing to you know, go through all that and learn and grow through that. But he also had a saying, it's like, uh, work your day job for your living and then your night job for savings. <laughs> he lived his whole life. It was like, but you know, that's kind of what he passed on, I guess. <laughs> Say that one more time. I want to get that quote. 
uh, live your day job for a uh, living or work your day job for a living and your, your night job for savings. <laughs> Love your dad. That's awesome. Very cool. All right. So let's talk about the first deal. Do you remember that first deal you did way back when that uh, got you in? First deal, you know, I was trying to learn how to do short sales. So I took like this mentorship or coaching yeah. program um, uh -huh. to do that. But I never actually did a short sale back then. Mm -hmm. uh, the first problem we found it was through a bandit sign. Okay. And the woman called me on it. Uh, she was wanting like 60 something thousand dollars on it. I offered her 50. Mm -hmm. um, she accepted the deal. But at the time, I didn't know what I was doing. I was really trying to wholesale the property, but I didn't know how. And my dad ended up talking to me to keep in the property. You know, and that's when everything was just so low. Right. Uh, we ended up buying that. I ended up learning how to fix. I do tile. I was hanging cabinets by myself. I painted. I did all the renovations myself. Wow. And then we were selling it for, I think, 86000 or something like that. I think I made like $16,000 profit on it. Um, it was the first, first deal. And ever since then, I was just like hooked. I was like, man, this is like real money. You know, it took me four <laughs> to think by myself, but it's real money. You know? yeah. So, yeah. so that's why I knew I could do it. And, how, uh, how long? Four months, you said? It took me four months to renovate it by myself. And so I'm guessing thousand square feet, maybe? Uh, no, it was actually like, I think it was 14, 1500 square foot wow. house. That's, yeah, the market was just crap back then, yeah. And I was working, because uh, I owned a dry cleaner at the time. Okay. So I was there, you know, from seven to whatever at night, eight, nine, whatever, you know, and then working on the weekends. So it was really nice on weekends I was renovating the property. You, you renovated by yourself a 1,500 square foot house nights and weekends in four months. Yes. My freaking Actually, contractors are fucking taking too much just time. like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. That is, that is awesome. All right. So you get, you get hooked. You get the taste. It's real money. 16 grand, right? You put in the bank account. And you're like, oh, some is good. More is better. Is that kind of the mentality? Yeah. I mean, I'd rather get something, you know, like what do they say? 10% of something than 100% of nothing. Okay. Deal. So yeah, but I mean, you know, it's just it was side. That's not a side hustle for me. Um, yeah, no kidding. I always had multiple side hustles. I was never just focused on one thing. So that's why now I'm more focused. Yeah. I'm selling, you know, the real estate business. I want to stay focused and not go all crazy and try to venture all these things I don't know anything about and losing. Yeah, because that's kind of what happened. I lost all my money. Yeah. At the same time, after I sold my dry cleaners, because I ventured into many different business ventures that I didn't know anything about. That's um, important. Uh, again, I've said it many times. You only got to be good at one part of this business. You don't have to go to 17 different places and do 12 different things, right? You, if you get really, really good at one or two things, don't overcomplicate your life, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's walk everybody through. So 2012, you do at least one flip. Did you do more than that? They kind of doing three that year. All right. So um, three through 12. Averaging... Probably three to six. Uh, okay. And that's our wholesaling some. Okay. Well, so I got into it with a few investors um, and learned that a little bit, doing tax deeds. Okay. Uh, picking them up before they go to you know, sale and all that. So yeah. we started doing that a little bit um, and it just kind of worked, you know, through all of that. You know, wow. coaching him, I was a sales rep. Uh, <laughs> I started trying to do MMA promoting and all types of stuff, man. I was in all, you, all the, opened up a nightclub or at least partnered in one. It was just, you know how to hustle. That is amazing. I, I knew how to do the wrong things. I should have <laughs> <laughs> experience. I should have done all that, but wow. That's awesome. So it was okay. a learning experience for sure. There you go. So let's, let's walk this through. So you, so 2013, you do three, I'm sorry, 12, then you go 13, 14, 15. Are you ramping? Are you doing, you, when do you get to kind of like one or two a month? When do you think that was? Um, that was, so 2015, I kind of took off. Okay. Uh, my sales position was actually starting to grow quite a bit. And I was looking for more stability at the time because we had two kids. Yep. I didn't want to work 80, 90 hours anymore. So the sales job was doing well, but then, you know, something happened with the company itself and they kind of screwed up my commissions and come to find out I owed them money. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so I think this whole year, like, oh man, I'm scaling. I just focus on this. I'm gonna grow this, you know. And then, uh, so I had to kind of reinvent myself again. And uh, back in 2016, okay, um, we bought our first property. Made I think we made 23 grand on that one in like three months. Um, so I was like, you know, this is I can get back into this. So it was really since then um, that we started doing one to two a month. Uh, 2016. 
Yeah. Okay. And again, in 2016, 17, 18, you, you're still a one man show and you're not full time. And not full time. Correct. Um, it wasn't until uh, January last year. So I actually quadrupled my, my salary I was making from my sales job and the you know, commissions and all that. So I actually quadrupled that. I was like, well, this is the perfect time to exit. You know, and go, um, <laughs> you quadruple your income and you go, ah, now's a good time to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a little slow making decisions. I probably should have left a little earlier, but I had to, I had to make sure, you know, <laughs> you know how funny that sounds in my head. I had to quadruple my day job. Well, that, you know, again, thank your parents, right? That's, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Okay. So you go, you go full time. What was that decision like? It was scary. Um, you know, when I, when I started kind of thinking about the idea, it was probably like in October. Okay. Didn't know how to scale. Cause I knew if I went full time, I would have to scale this thing. I couldn't just keep doing, you know, I'd have so much more time on my hands. Like, what do I do? Uh, that's when I joined good success. Um, yeah. And in that, that February there, I went to my first event uh, with them and I saw all these guys doing 152, 300, 400 deals, whatever, and had all these great businesses Yeah, uh, I didn't have. Um, and so from there, it just kind of sparked in me, you know, that, that I knew I, what I need. I knew what I had to do, but I didn't know how to do it. Um, so about probably in June, I went to a Sharper or Gary Harper's mm -hmm. boot camp, and that's kind of where everything started changing quite a bit for me. Uh, we start putting the right systems, the right processes in place. I start getting more comfortable with, you know, hiring people, mm -hmm. uh, but the right people. Um, and, and that's it. I mean, ever since then, we've been just scaling. Very, very cool. So one thing I failed to ask back from like, let's say 2016 to 18, were you were using your money, family money, uh, joint ventures, partners? How, how the money? Um, so I JV'd on every single deal uh, with a money partner. Okay. So I I'd acquire the property or I'd locate the property. Yeah. Uh, I would, you know, project manage and then I would sell it because I'm also an agent as well. Mm -hmm. So now uh, retail and sell the backside of it and do a 50 50 split. Um, okay. Now things are different as far as percentages go. Sure. Uh, it's all 100% uh, private money. Okay. So again, just so we're clear on the private, so 100% purchase, 100% repairs, you put in the labor and then you split it on the back end 50 50. Right. So they're 100% passive. Yes. Um, we don't really talk about the deal until, you know, once you buy it and once I sell it, you know, no time to really talk about the deal, you know? Uh, so I keep it really passive for them. Um, I've built a really good relationship and made them a lot of money. I bet. So, so now it's just, you know, I can just call them like, hey, I got this awesome deal. And they just say, okay, and wire me the money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's the routing number of the bank account? Let's go. <laughs> right. So it's been a really good relationship. It's been fun for sure. All right. How I'm curious, how'd you find this deep pocket money investor? Just relationships, network, friend to father? Uh, just relationships. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've used some family money, but, uh, but my first partner that kind of got me back in the game, uh, he's just a high school buddy. Okay. Um, a nice, uh, you know, insurance brokerage. Okay. Uh, himself, he was looking for something passive. Um, so got with him and then, you know, he, he kind of introduced me to a buddy that we had like a while back in from high school that actually made a bunch of money to Bitcoin. Ah, uh, yeah, so he cashed out right at the peak, you know, like having this Bitcoin. And, and so he was uh, looking to put his money somewhere. <laughs> so he's been just using most of his money here uh, lately. That's very cool. Very cool. And again, goes back to network, right? As uh, Jim Ingersoll says, right? Your network is your net worth. So you just mm -hmm. never, never know who you can partner with. So uh, it, it's very cool. All right. So you make the decision to go full time. You go to Gary Harper, you know, good success mastermind, all that wonderful stuff. You get, you start to see other people running real companies, right? Instead of one man shows. Um, what were, what were some of the things that you said that kind of opened your eyes? Like, wow, I, I could be doing so much more if I did this or that. Hiring somebody. <laughs> Hiring. Okay. Yeah, I think the last good success match from my, or the one before last, you know, they were all just like, just hire somebody. You know, it was like, it's like, <laughs> the same thing. I'm like, dude, just go hire somebody. And then, you know, that following week, I hired my mother in law to be my office manager. Uh, and she was helping me kind of do more of the retail transactions. Okay. But then as I started going more to these, uh, the sharper boot camps or leadership uh, mastermind, yeah. now seeing more guys kind of like me, but they're on a bigger scale. Yeah. But like, what? people they were hiring you know because I wanted to make sure I kind of do things a little slowly like I'm more analytical okay and there has to be like 
100% solid reason for me to do it, or I just, I talk myself out of it. <laughs> As I started seeing, you know, who they were hiring, what they were hiring, how they were hiring, it started giving me more confidence to do that. Okay. And so we're still growing. I mean, we're still trying to create our processes and stuff like that. But, um, but you know, every day is, I change my mind yeah. about everything. And so I think it's hard for them to keep up with me because I change my mind so much. But yeah. you know, real estate's fun like that. It's, just, it's yeah. always so a couple of things on that topic. So first off, office manager first, kind of help with paperwork, I'm guessing. Yeah, so I was trying to do the investing side and the retail side, and I was getting bogged down with the retail stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I was just scatterbrained. I, you know, I was so unorganized, I didn't know what was going on at the time. So she's been able to help me you know, keep all of my transactions in you know, the way they should be. And, uh, okay. And then after that, where, where'd you go next? Uh, buying agent, selling, where'd you go next? Um, acquisitions. Uh, so I hired an acquisitions girl. Um, we actually kind of moved her to dispositions. Um, but I, I needed somebody to go out there, you know, work the leads, you know, yep. with me to acquire more properties. Uh, so I went to acquisitions uh, after that. Um, I thought hired, actually hired a second one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we moved in toward the VA type okay. of model. And we got three VAs now, or two VAs. We just had to let one go. But, uh, the, the one we hired first, she actually turned my integrator. Wow. Uh, she's been awesome. She's been helping me with everything, you know, from A to Z. And she's got that real estate background from other companies. So that was really helpful. So I was able to use some of their systems and stuff. She's been kind of implementing things for there and helping me like make decisions and awesome. where we this and that. So she's been amazing. So you hired um, local and then I'm guessing the VAs are Philippines maybe? Yep. Philippines. Yep. Very cool. All right. So, uh, and the other thing we did, I didn't mention, or at least I didn't ask, have you always been, you invest like 30 minutes from home? What, how far away do you go? Just Polk County. Um, I, I have no idea. There. How big is that? Um, uh, it's probably a 20, 25 mile range. Okay. Go. All right. So you could get to anything in 30 minutes. Yeah. 30, 35 minutes. Okay. Take a look. All right. Very cool. And how many people live in Polk County, roughly? Is it half a million people, 200,000? I have no idea how big. You know, I don't really know either. I think max is a census for me. I think it's like 150 or 200,000. I'm not really sure. Okay, so it's not a million people, though. I'm just trying to get a... No, I don't think... Oh, no, it's not that big. It's not Miami, right? No, <laughs> definitely not Miami. Okay. We're a little more spread out here. All right. Um, and then what, what, what do you see normally in, in Central Florida? Is it... Uh, Single story, three bedroom, two bath ranches, or what is the inventory? You see everything from mobile homes to you know. I mean, we're we're really diverse. I mean, there's just everything here. Okay. At the countryside, you got you know, mobile homes on like five acres to you know your you know three two two thousand square foot homes on like a tenth of an acre. You know, so it's like, <laughs> you see everything here in Polk County, and it's only like they're all right next to each other too. So you'll have million dollar houses next to you know, mobile homes that are falling apart. You know, wow. so it's mixed okay. uh, in some areas. All right. Well, I, let's, uh, let's turn this around into, you know, I heard you're, you're tackling a big, uh, a big project where you're looking to rezone some land and going after 57 townhomes. Is that right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to create that legacy wealth. Um, that's kind of where the vision's at right now. It took me a long time to decide which way I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. I was thinking single family at first and trying to do like duplex and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I just found out it wasn't for me. It just wasn't, I don't know. I was kind of, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I decided to go multifamily and don't, I didn't know how to do it. Uh, so I talked to one of my partners that has been in the space. Um, his family's, you know, owns multi, multiple townhomes, stuff like that. And we had this piece of land just sitting there that we've had for about three, four years. Um, and you know, I was like, well, why don't we do something on that? So now we're trying to get it rezoned. It's currently zone 43. I'm trying to go through the whole process of getting it uh, high density, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to fit 57. Um, and uh, we're now just going at it. Very cool. So just so I make sure I understand that, it's currently zone 43, meaning it could have 43 units today? It could share the uh, the zoning for the, the neighbor next door, okay. uh, which would be like seven units per acre. Um, Got it. Try to increase it to 11 and a half uh, per acre. Ah, okay, okay, all right. And then I, I've never done that. So are we talking months? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you think it's months to get a rezoning done? Years? Uh, yeah, he, he's. We're probably looking at at least six to nine months in this whole entire process here to to get it done. All right. And then the worst case scenario, do you go just do the forty three, or yeah, they did not everything. We're going forty three. So, um, is, so worst case. Worst case scenario. Okay. Well, that's not bad. Okay. Uh, and then again, it's going to be ground up development. It's just raw land today. Just raw land. Yep. Wow. How'd you find the piece? You said you had it three or four years? Yeah. So there's a small town called Eagle Lake, uh, where we're from. And I think at one time my dad wanted to become the mayor because he just ended up buying like all types of land and block, like all full blocks and stuff and had a plaza. Um, now he's kind of like selling off all this stuff, but my sister bought the gym that we were, I was the owners in the gym, but she bought the building you know, on the corner lot there. And when the, the land next to it, the five acres became available, we were all just like, well, let's just buy that too. <laughs> I bought that. Um, we've been sitting on it and hadn't been able to sell it. And I was like, well, I got to do something with it. You know, it's like nobody else is motivated my family to do anything with it. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just going to do it, man. I mean, I'm going to figure it out. You know, I think it'll be fine. I think I'll do okay, I guess. But oh, I'm sure you'll do good. <laughs> so you mentioned your sister. I failed to ask earlier, how many uh, brother sisters do you have? Uh, I have one brother, younger brother, and two older sisters. All right, so one of four. Do, uh, do all of them have this grind? You already told us your sister bought a gym. Does everybody buy real estate in your family? No, it's just uh, they wanted to invest their money in something. You know, my dad loves Eagle Lake and saw this building and told them they should buy it, and they bought it. Right. Uh, it's probably like her first piece um, that she's bought. My other sister is a uh, she's a homemaker, but she she has her broker's license. Um, okay. She's not really doing much with it, but she has that. And my little brother, he's he's a grinder. He yeah. uh, he just opened up his third restaurant. He's about to open two more. Um, and he's been on like every Net Food Network channel, travel channel. I mean, in his first year, wow. it's bloated. So like to see Orlando has created the wars to give him, like they're just, every <laughs> single is getting something. It's just been amazing to watch. I, I, I have to admit, when I hear you say somebody's a grinder, I get scared because I would call you a grinder. <laughs> that's, that's pretty amazing. All right. So I, I, I'm curious, you're already talking about legacy wealth. Uh, clearly you're a young man. Where do you, where do you see taking this? I mean, cause this is something you could do forever. Where, where yeah. You I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Um, like I said, every day I change my mind. So I just want to see where this goes, man, really. But you know, I do want to get really heavy into the apartment buildings. Um, okay. I think that's where most of my time is going to be spent, you know, going forward. Okay. Uh, so I'm in these value add type properties. And I just really just want to leave, you know, it's not for my family, you know, my kids, their kids, their kids. Yeah. Build that legacy, man. Very cool. So you have some kids. What are their ages? Uh, so I have a, a five, he's about to be six here in August, but a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and then we actually have one on the way. Oh, um, wow. Congratulations. Three weeks pregnant. So. Nice. So I'm curious, are you going to teach your children about real estate if they come and ask you? 100%. There you go. You're going to do it different. I'm hoping they want to get into it with me. It'd be really fun, I think, to, uh, to do a little family business together. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. So uh, how can people follow you or, or you know, is it, do you have a website? You're doing so many good things and, I, and thank you for giving back on this channel. But how, how can people reach out or follow you or be a part of yes. what you're doing in Florida? Yeah, it's Facebook, man. I mean, that's really the mainly how I network. I'm pretty introverted, so I don't really network too well other than these events like masterminds that I go to. And even then, I'm always the quietest guy in the room. <laughs> so uh, I'm not really good at that networking thing. You know, I need to get better at it. But um, probably Facebook or you can email me or call me. At, you know, I'm always answering my phone. So I'd love to help anybody you know, I can. All right. You want to give your email or, or phone number out or which one you're comfortable giving? Um... We can just do email. Uh, it's dweenrealtor at gmail.com. It says D-U-Y-N realtor at gmail.com. Very cool. So if you have any questions about what this young man's doing, he's got a great track record and done, done some amazing things. I can't wait to see what you do in the next just two or three years. I mean, it's been amazing to watch the last 12 months. So. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited, man. This is a lot of moving parts right now. It's just, it's going to be cool to see everything start coming together. Yeah. I can kind of have a vision, but you know, it's going to be really, really cool to see it come together. Well, I, we got to do another one of these when you uh, break ground on your 57 units. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. All right, Dewey. Thank you very much. Cool. For you. There you <laughs> go. All right, brother. Thanks again. All right, bro. All right, bye.